Good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen, and warm welcome to DIA Summit, Brave Ukraine. We are happy to be here in Davos at World Economic Forum, and this is our first international DIA Summit. Quite a big deal and responsibility for us. We hold it within Ukrainian Recovery Conference, and we are grateful to our partners in Ukraine House Davos for making it possible. Today, more than ever, we feel the need to talk about digital Ukraine with global leaders, to spread our bold ideas around the world, and to remind the world about Ukrainian bravery. We gathered here lots of friends of Ukraine, and I want to thank you all for your continuous support to Ukraine during these three months. Jointly with the digital ministers of European countries, we have the same values and believe that digitalization is the future. Therefore, we should build this future together. As the part of the event, European digital ministers will share their experiences and best cases with a panel discussion. Today, we will talk about the brave Ukrainian vision of digital state. And I want to invite to this stage a person who has managed to start the digital reform in Ukraine. Few months he has pushed the digital blockade of Russia. Thus hundreds and hundreds of tech giants and international companies have withdrawn or suspended their businesses in Russia. Thanks to his bold ideas, creative mind and proactive position, Ukraine is known as the digital transformation tiger. So please welcome on this stage, Vice Prime Minister of Ukraine, Minister of Digital Transformation, Mikhailo Fedorov. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you, dear guests, uh, for your support of Ukraine, for economic sanctions against Russia, weapons for our army, and financial aid. It has been 90 days of war since armed forces of Ukraine heroically defend our country and the peace of the whole world. Ukrainians from the temporarily occupied territories of Zaporizhia, Kherson, Luhansk and Donetsk regions don't give up and bravely stand up against the Russian invaders. I want the whole world to know about our brave people. I also would like to say thank you to our partners and donors who made this event possible. Ukraine Recovery Conference, Switzerland, East Europe Foundation, Visa and Visa System, Payment System, European Union and in Ukraine and FIAP, EU for Digital UA, and many others who support us. Let me give the floor to our dear partners, Visa, in cooperation with which we have been digitizing our country. Hello. It's an honor to join Minister Fedorov and so many other distinguished senior officials from Europe at this important conference to discuss best practices in government-led digital transformation, especially in the context of this terrible war in Ukraine. I can tell you from personal experience, digital transformation has been at the forefront of the Ukrainian government's strategy both before and now during the war. And I especially want to recognize Minister Fedorov and his team for the key role that they've all played in developing and executing this strategy while also driving strong public-private partnerships. The opportunity for me to deliver this message is a testament to this spirit. Let me talk for a moment about visa in Ukraine. Ukraine has been a very dear and important country for us for many years. And for over 10 years, it's been the hub of our business in 17 countries, spanning from the Western Balkans to Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus, the Caucasus, and Central Asia. The war that has unfolded since February 24th has touched all of us. Our initial priority was to ensure the security and well-being of our employees in Kiev, as well as ensuring business continuity for our client banks in Ukraine. We've taken many extraordinary actions, 
including our announcement of the suspension of our business in Russia. We also supported the launch of a new international fund transfer service with PayPal to make it easier for people to send money to Ukraine from all over the world using a Visa card. And Visa and the Visa Foundation are supporting the humanitarian crisis in Ukraine with more than $3 million in funds already directed to UNICEF and Red Cross Ukraine. Now let me briefly talk about our deep partnership with the Ministry of Digital Transformation. I first met Minister Fedorov in June 2020. At the time, Minister Fedorov's team was working with Visa to embed Visa payment credentials in the Dia Super app to accelerate digital payments in Ukraine. That partnership led to a joint project where we built an entirely new business model for the ministry. For the first time in our company's history, we deployed our e-commerce platform that we call CyberSource on behalf of a government to help the ministry enable e-commerce solutions for any and all Ukrainian businesses and enable them to process all types of payment solutions with a high level of resiliency and security. Then, in late 2021, our partnership grew further. We started supporting the Ukrainian government disbursement program to increase COVID-19 vaccination rates by enabling the issuance of digital visa cards into the DIA app. These cards included COVID-19 vaccination information confirmed by our bank partners. We've issued 10 million to date. Most recently, we've done everything we possibly can to help meet the new emergency needs that have arisen during the war. I had the opportunity to meet again with Minister Fedorov virtually on March 2nd, approximately a week after Ukraine was invaded. We reviewed very specific needs the ministry had to help Ukrainian citizens and businesses and to help enable digital payments to continue in Ukraine. We immediately began supporting banks and fintechs by providing them with operational support, risk management support, and fee waivers. And thanks to Minister Fedorov for securing Starlink terminals, our team has been able to build additional resilience for our client banks via a connection to cloud services. Currently, we're envisioning a new stage of collaboration with the enhanced functionalities and capabilities of DIA to support broader disbursements for the displaced population outside of Ukraine. And we're also very proud to share with you that we are supporting the reopening of the new DIA Business Consulting Center for small and medium businesses in Bucha. This small town near Kiev is a symbol not only of the war's atrocities, but also the spirit of resilience that will drive the reconstruction efforts in Ukraine. And Visa is humbled to be part of this. Minister Fedorov, distinguished members of the Ukraine delegation and the international community, you can count on Visa as a partner to strengthen digital transformation and support economic resilience. At Visa, we say we are uplifting everyone, everywhere, but more than ever, all international businesses must uplift everyone in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Visa. And uh, for Ukraine and whole world, everything changed on February 24, dividing our life into three parts. What we are doing before the war, the war time, what we are doing now, and after our victory, what future we are going to build. Here, is what we have been going through for the last 90 days. My presentation is also divided into three blocks. Before the war, during the war, and after the war. Before the war, we created the Ministry of Digital Transformation in September 2019. The digital state is an important part of the President Zelensky program. We have a big ambitious mission to make Ukraine the most convenient country in the fields of public services, and I believe we have achieved some great results. We decomposed our vision into four goals. To transform 100% of government services into online, to provide 95% of the population with the quality access to fixed and mobile internet, to teach 6 million of Ukrainians basic digital skills, and to increase the IT GDP up to 10%. It was five before the war. 
we have built the unique org board for digital transformation all over the country. We established the Committee of Digital Transformation in Ukrainian Parliament. The post of CDTO, Chief Digital Transformation Officer, in, uh, implemented in every ministry and at every state level. This management approach has led us to success. As a result, now we have one of the best govern, government apps in the world, DIA. Here you can store digital documents, pay taxes, donate to the army, and even watch TV. Over the past two years, our team has launched 11 digital documents in the app DIA. Driver's license, student card, vehicles, registration, and insurance. And the most important of them is a digital passport of the citizens of Ukraine that has the same legal power as the paper one. This way we became the first country in the world to legalize electronic passport. We have launched a revolutionary social services for the tax payments, the change of the residence registration and the fastest in the world way to start your own business. You can do it all on your smartphone. Uh, not only did we launch the passport, but we also made it possible to share it in a few clicks via QR code with anybody and anywhere you need. For example, one of the most common life situations is when you check in uh, in the hotel. You can see it on the screen every, mo every month, millions of Ukrainians use it. Two years ago, we created a digital passport in a smartphone, a document one should not leave at home. Ukraine is the first country in the world to equate a digital passport with a physical one. Having a digital passport in DIA, Ukrainians can open bank accounts, receive money transfers, pick up postal packages, board trains and planes within Ukraine, etc. Using digital passport in DIA is secure and reliable. You can check its validity with the help of a QR code in the application. This feature is available for any DIA user. We got rid of endless paper trail, certified by handwritten signatures. In two simple clicks, Ukrainians are able to use certified copies of their important documents in institutions and even when checking into a hotel. The documents are stored in PDF format and have a date and notice from organization that had received it. DIA. Simple. Invisible. Humane. A very important part of digital country is a digital signature. That's why we have launched DIA signature. It's a revolutionary service. You can create the electronic signature right in your smartphone without attending offline state of uh, private offices. How it work? We use bank ID for authorization in DIA. And when you are creating the DIA signature, you face biometric are matched with the biometric uh, of the demographic register in real time. It's amazing. Eight million, million of Ukrainians have already used it. DIA Digital Signature is a secure signature on your smartphone. To generate a DIA Digital Signature, simply open DIA application and click on DIA Digital Signature menu and blink your eyes. The image of your face is then verified with the photo in the database. Using such digital signature, people are able to sign contracts and open bank accounts online. The application is storing all signing history. Your digital signature is simply in your pocket. Next service. Uh, during COVID-19 crisis, we learned how to make target payments into virtual bank accounts of Ukrainians in just a few clicks. D automatically recognizes if a user has met the requirements of vaccination to make a decision about the payment. The payment. This money uh, could only be used for purchasing particular kinds of goods and services, and thus we managed to recreate the e-money using regular digital instruments. It's revolutionary for target social payments. E aid government payments in DIA app. The Ministry of Digital Transformation has completely changed the approach to social assistance. People were able to send in their applications in a few clicks on DIA app. Their information was taken from databases and the system determined their eligibility for these services. As a result, they only needed to verify their data on DIA and choose the account. 
payments were released on special cards. This was the largest online social service in the history of Ukraine. We managed to simplify and speed up the process for people as much as possible. This service is expanding. When the war began, it started being available to Ukrainians who had to move away from hostile territories. In the future, all social assistance Ukrainians will receive through e-aid. Today, 17.5 million of Ukrainians are using DIA app. Uh, we have created the implementation de uh, department which record, uh, records and analyzes all the metrics of the product development, uh, communicates with our partners and uh, supervises the product life cycle. Uh, since 2019, we provided the quality access to the fixed internet uh, to more than 1 million Ukrainians of the 3,000 small villages. Almost 3 million of Ukrainian uh, villagers got connected <coughs> to 4G internet. Ukraine has one of the highest rates in Europe of the internet penetration level. Last year, we taught more <coughs> than 1 million Ukrainians basic digital skills using educational mini-series format. It's like Netflix, but better. <laughs> uh, all this time we have been transforming our economy. We have launched a special law and tax regime for IT companies, DIA City. It's the best tax conditions for IT companies in Europe. Hundreds of companies have already joined DIA City. Ukraine has legalized virtual assets. We launched the Ukrainian Startup Fund, which is the biggest angel venture fund in Ukraine. We have started the reformation of the tech education in Ukraine. Let's watch the video about it. Space. It can be so unbearably little and so terrifyingly vast, you get goosebumps. Usually it is a good sign. It means room for growth. IT business in Ukraine needs space to keep developing and operating. So we created Dia City, an exclusive economical and legal outlet for IT. Here you will not find outdated schemes, gray areas, constant battles between what is legal and profitable. <laughs> there is breathing space. Legal tools are the same for London and Venezia, and intellectual property is protected by law are able to control their contracts and receive social guarantees. Law enforcement structures are incapable of acting in their sole interests. Here, taxes are not pressing and you get headroom for reinvestments, new Ukrainian businesses and large international companies. This is space for Sergei, Volodymyr, Anya, Nazar and this guy. This how Ukraine was doing digital revolution before the war. Ukraine is a country where anyone can become a president and start significant changes for all the people around. To reinvent the way of interaction between citizen and government, we created the Ministry of Digital Transformation. Our main goals? To digitize, connect, educate, and develop our flagship product, DIA. One-stop shop for all the documents and public services. No paper, no stress, no bureaucracy. Ukraine is the first country in the world where digital passport works as physical ID. Our priority is to cover with high-speed internet, big and small cities, and cultivate digital skills in big and small Ukrainians. We invest in startups and create proper conditions for their growth. Dia City, the best tax system in the world for the IT industry. World's major companies are already in Ukraine, and some Ukrainian startups became unicorns. Our goal is to build the most convenient country in the world for people and business. Technologies change countries. People. You. And then uh, the war started. 
For the first time in history, there is a cybersecurity, digital, and informational war, as well as a war in the fields. For the last two and a half years, we have been creating the digital country, the products and approaches of which we could adapt for leading the digital war. Let's see what we managed to do in the fields of government services during the war. As a result of the war, almost 11 million Ukrainians fled their homes. 7 million of them are internally displaced. It takes a minute for Ukrainians to apply for an IDP status certificate in DIA. Ukrainians can also submit an application for IDP assistance in DIA app as well. Ukrainian government sending payments to help our people during three months. The Russian military have destroyed tens of thousands of homes of civil people. Damaged property feature was created to track damages as accurately as possible. Ukrainians are able to report complete or partial damage to their private homes and residential properties. When Ukrainians had to be evacuated from hotspots, they had left behind everything they had earned throughout their lives. We updated e-aid service. There is a one-time financial assistance from the government to evacuated people. On the first day of this feature, we have received one million applications. When the Russian army attacked Ukraine, it destroyed a number of TV towers. In order to provide Ukrainians with uninterrupted access to information, DIA TV and DIA radio were created in the DIA app. Using this feature, the population follows all the news and even had watched Eurovision recently. The Bayraktar drone became a symbol of Ukrainian resistance. The game e Bayraktar was created in DIA to lighten the mood of the Ukrainians. Everyone can experience being an operator of the legendary drone. Yes, it's my favorite game. <laughs> um, DIA uses the quality authorization. All DIA users are verified. When people see the mo movements of Russian army or weapons, they take the photos of it and send it to us using a special chatbot. This way, we don't get fakes. Let's, let's see how it works. From the first days of the invasion, Ukraine showed mastery on the digital front. Team at Ministry of Digital Transformation created a chatbot, Yevrog, e enemy in the Telegram Messenger. With this chatbot, Ukrainians can report the movement of occupants and collaborators and capture the location of enemy equipment with just a few clicks. The main difference from all other existing bots is authorization through DIA app. Only citizens of Ukraine are able to use the bot. Support service at DIA processes applications and submits them to the headquarters of armed forces of Ukraine. Brave Ukrainians help Ukrainian military to destroy entire troops of occupants. Chatbot has become a digital weapon of every Ukrainian in occupied territories. More than 10,000 Starlings have arrived in Ukraine. We have been using them for support and uh, restoration of critical infrastructure. Thank you, SpaceX and uh, European Minister of uh, Digital Transformation uh, for your aid in this project. Let's see how we use them. Thousands of bombs have destroyed internet cables and cut off Ukrainians from access to information and each other. However, internet connection became faster and more reliable. Ukraine has received more than 10,000 Starlink stations, thanks to partners. Due to war in Ukraine, SpaceX has updated its software to use less energy. Starlink is now powered by a car cigarette lighter. Starlink is supporting our key infrastructures, health facilities, financial institutions, energy plants. It has restored mobile connections in deoccupied Ukrainian towns and villages. Internet connection and mobile service are already available in Bordanka, Irpin, and Bucha. With just one Starlink station, the service was instantly re-established in five villages. Every day in Ukraine, about 150,000 people are actively using Starlink. Additionally, Ukrainian engineers are working hard during martial law every day. They risk their lives to restore connections, repair cables, and tower functions. Even in wartime, Ukraine stays always online. Ukraine has got the unique experience of using uh, technologies during the war. We have created a strong IT army. 
Now there are about 300,000 participants. IT Army of Ukraine brings together both Ukrainians and international IT professionals. All cyber soldiers joined on a voluntary basis. I do believe cybersecurity is a bedrock of the digital state we have been building since the establishment of the ministry. Actually, a reliable cyber sphere is one of the reasons why we made it through the first days of war. For the last eight years, Ukraine has been under cyber attacks coming from Russia all the time. Of course, cyber attacks during the war became even more intense. In almost three months of the war in Ukraine, at least six groups of Russian hackers carried out more than 430 cyber attacks. It's important to mention that we have never attacked Russia in cyberspace, um, only defended ourselves. The war of the 21st century has turned into the first cyber war. Software engineers of Ukraine and the rest of the world have united into a great IT army. Their main goal is to spread the truth about the war. They created a telegram channel to coordinate reports and instructions. On a weekly basis, IT Army attacks about 200 websites. During the first three days of its existence, the IT Army have shut down a number of critical government websites. After all independent media outlets were shut down, only propaganda media and TV channels remained in Russia. The most important of them is RuTube. The IT Army took down all of the propaganda TV TV channels in Russia and aired a single truthful broadcast about war in the Ukraine. On May 9th, the most important military holiday in Russia, live broadcasting was hacked and showed messages about war instead of program descriptions. On that day, RuTube was also shut down. Dozens of petabytes of information were deleted and the internal system was hacked as well. The IT Army informs Russian mothers about their sons who lost their lives on the battlefield. Artificial intelligence recognizes the faces of abandoned Russian soldiers and finds their social media accounts. The army searches for relatives and notifies them of their death. We know names of all the looters. The IT army obtained databases of postal services they used to ship stolen goods from Belarus to Russia. Ukraine is showing the whole world that in the 21st century, the truth cannot be destroyed. We use AI to recognize the identity of the dead Russians and uh, let's watch how it works. A special service for it. We have initiated the first state crypto fund. You can donate in any uh, cryptocurrency or NFT. It has already raised more than 60 million in crypto. All funds go to military and humanitarian relief efforts. That is something the world hasn't seen before. So you wake up once and catch a thought. Where should invest to some of my crypto? It's not that easy, it's pretty hard, cause you are special, you are not a regular guy, right? Probably wine, pardon Chateau Grando, just a few bottles made in 19 something zero. Or an alpaca farm, alpaca's cute and fun, but you we now are probably done. Invest in peace, bro, that's what he owns. Invest in peace, bro, it feels so good. It's a short version. <laughs> and a few weeks ago, President Zelensky launched the global fundraising initiative United24. U24 is very easy one-click donation platform. You can choose one of three directions to donate. Defense, humanitarian aid and rebuild of Ukraine.
What future are we dreaming of? Ukraine will definitely win. Our victory is coming soon. So today we are already thinking what we will be doing after it. The future belongs to the governments which operate like IT companies. We aim to do whatever it takes to develop our flexibility and set ourselves up for the growth trajectory. And as the last thing, this video has been made to motivate our teams for the future actions. So far it has been seen only by President Zelensky and, and my team. And since we are having such private meetings today, I would like to share it with you. Let's look eight years ahead. 2030. The history of the new Ukraine is studied all over the world. Why? Because its GDP growth rate is the fastest in the world. Scripts have replaced bureaucrats. 500,000 former public servants are successfully integrated in the new economy. No more red tape, but paperless. No more banknotes, but cashless. Yes, we became the first country to abandon paper money. Ukraine now has the best tax system in the world. Large-scale privatization happened, and services were outsourced to large companies. For example, Ukrainian customs have become the fastest in the world. Also, Ukraine is the most powerful cyber army in the world. After the horrors of 2022, Ukraine focused on security systems. Now each production has its own air defense. And the sleep of Ukrainians is protected by the most advanced Iron Dome. The Ukrainian government is digital. It reminds of an IT company with effective implementation of decisions. And the large construction program that has become grand. Because the whole world has come together to help Ukraine recover. Ukraine is courageous. That's because the country made four key decisions. Flexible governance. The best tax system in the world public-private partnership and outsourcing, the world's most technologically advanced security system. And now, everyone knows about it. Thank you all for your attention and for your incredible support of Ukraine. We will never forget those who stood with us in this darkest hour. Glory to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mikhailo.